Hey everyone, um, my name is David Rao. I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. Um, you can also find my ideas here on Instagram Live, on Facebook Live, and on Instagram and Facebook um, in both of those feeds. Um, you can also find my ideas on my blog, makemomentsmatter.org, my podcast, um, Make Moments Matter Music Education Podcast, Pinterest, Twitter, YouTube, a lot of other places. Um, and if any of those things are helpful, great. I hope that one of those things helps you find some cool ideas um, that you can use in your classroom. Um, I'm here tonight on Instagram Live and Facebook Live to talk with you a little bit about, um, well, something a little different. Usually in these Musical Monday videos, what I do is I take you through all of my lessons for the week, uh, kindergarten through fifth grade lessons, um, and I give you a brief overview of all of those lessons for the week and then do a deep dive on one specific grade level where I talk specifically about all the resources and the processes and the the, the path that I take to get through that lesson. Today I'm gonna to do something a little bit different. First of all, because, um, well, last week I went through all my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons, and so I don't wanna repeat that, because if you were watching last week or if you watched the recap last week, you would have seen all of that information, so I don't wanna go through all of that and bore you. So, first of all, that's why I'm not doing the normal thing. The second is that, um, in the feedback that y'all gave me on my week 10 video, um, I did a, a little survey that just said, you know, basically, how am I doing? What do you want to hear more of? Um, what's good? What's not good? And it was an anonymous survey. One of the things a lot of people said was, I'd love to hear about concerts. I heard you're preparing for a concert. Can you talk more about the concert? Can you talk more about concerts? And I think that that's something that all of us have a little bit of insecurity about. And part of that is because nobody taught us this stuff in college. And part of it is that we don't get to really often see one another's concerts or help in that process. And so I just wanted to share a little bit about what I know about concerts, what I've seen, what I've done, um, what friends have done, and sort of um, what goes into a concert and all of that. So that's sort of something I'm going to share about today in just a minute. Um, just one quick reminder, just like normal, um, in... Um, Facebook, in the comments section, there's a link at the very bottom, and on Instagram, in my profile, there's a link that will take you to a recap page. So anything I talk about today, any links or online resources or anything that I talk about that you're like, ooh, I wanna know what that is, I'll put the link to that in um, on that page on, on my blog, which is makemomentsmatter.org slash video. Down at the very bottom, there's a, a Musical Mondays recap page and I'll put all those links and things in there. Someone last week was watching or watching the recap of the video and they said, hey, you talked about those form pumpkins, um, but I don't see them in the recaps. And for some reason, the, the website had just not posted that or something. So I went in and fixed it. But thank you so much for like sending me a message and saying like, oh yeah, that thing that you said was there wasn't there. And so I, I fixed it. So if you, if you ever hear anything in these videos and you're like, hey, what about that? Send me a message if you don't see it in the recap and I'll definitely put it in there. Um, one other thing before I get started is that midweek last week, I added another video. I did a, week, a video from school where I talked a little bit about hand drums, the procedure that I introduced them, all of the sort of the, the back, everything behind hand drums and how I make it work with my kids and some of the tips and tricks that I've come up with or have learned from other people or have incorporated. So if you're interested, if you have a set of hand drums, that you want to use in class, um, you can go back and find that video in the video archive, and that's on my blog, makemomentsmatter.org slash videos, or if you're on Facebook, if you're a Facebooker, um, you can go to the just the video feed on the side, or you can go to YouTube, because apparently there are people who, who want to watch during their plan period but can't watch Facebook, so I've been reposting all this stuff on YouTube. But anyway, all that to say there's a hand drum video if you're interested in learning more procedure about that or how do I do that. And um, you can actually see into my classroom and see the hand drums at work. So yes, it was a, like a surprise live video. So <laughs> there it was. And if you want to go back and watch it, you can go back and rewatch it. Um, so one last thing, as always, thank you so much for your questions and your comments along the way. I think today is especially a great day if you ask questions because then, you know, like we can go back and you can, in the commentary, I love when... Um, people leave comments and other teachers see it and react to those comments or ask, the, you know, say like in those comments, oh, I had the same question or uh, send that to me too or um, I do it this way instead. But because really I don't do these videos for me. I do them so that we can be more of a community. And when people react and comment to each other, it's just so cool to see that. And it feels like 
we're just all sitting in a room together talking about our lessons. So it's great to see that feedback. So um, thank you for leaving questions and comments as we go, because everyone's different when it comes to concerts. Everyone's different um, with how they do things. Um, so the reason I'm, I'm talking about this tonight is that two of my grade levels out of six are preparing for concerts. Uh, my third graders have a concert the week before Thanksgiving. My fourth graders have a concert um, the week before, before Christmas break, winter break. Uh, my fifth graders have a, a chorus tour coming up. So like my brain is full of like all of those logistical things. Um, so I thought instead of trying to like take you through a lesson of how I teach one of those songs, which would probably also be valuable, I thought I'd talk about the overall process and, and maybe what you might want to consider as you're planning for a concert or a performance or um, whatever. So my, my thought for today is my plan for the form. I would just talk about like what is a concert um, and why would you do them and, and what do you include um, all the things to do before the concert, all the things to do the day of or during the concert, and then some of the follow-up things after the concert. Um, and then I would also talk about some of my favorite like mini musicals or things that I've used in the past or programs or themes that I really like. Um, so that'll sort of round out the end of the video. Um, so let me get started just talking about like what is a concert and why would you do it? Um, it's it's really interesting. I think how you choose to do a concert really depends upon several things. It depends on your school community and what they've done in the past. Um, I walked into a building that someone who was there for like 20 years and Donna always did this and Donna always did this and Donna always did this and I remember Donna did this and so I heard a lot of that. And so, I, you know, in some ways it's like, I wanna make it my own, but also I know I'm walking into a, a school that has a tradition and a community and so, I'm not going to totally upend the cart and, and change everything, but that's something you wanna keep in mind when you walk into a job is what are the expectations? What are the traditions? What can I keep in value? And what maybe should change in a year or maybe this year? What are things that are, are worth um, doing a little differently? So um, think, ask around um, if the person who was there before you didn't leave records you know, ask like, what did they do and how involved was it and, and who was involved and what grade levels and what are the, some of the themes that people remember? I always like to ask like the team that I'm working with. So like my art teacher and my tech teacher and whatever, say like, what do you remember? Because a lot of the times they get very involved in the planning and the creation. And so it's good to ask them those questions. Um, so the first thing you wanna think about is your school tradition. And then I would say, um, what and who do you want to feature? So at my old school, um, I was able to do two grade levels at once for a concert. So all of second grade and all of third grade were involved in one concert, which now it like blows my mind that I was able to do that. But I had smaller grades. I had only a school of 500 and I was able to do that. Now at a school of 1200, just fitting one grade in the gym and one grade on those risers is still overflow, even if you think the attrition of kids not showing up for the concert. It's crazy, it's so many kids. So, you know, what and how do you want to feature kids? Are you able to put more than one grade at once? I think it's a great idea if you can because then it's less stress and less time taken away from curriculum and you, you personally are getting that all done at once. Woohoo! Um, the other thing I would say is, you know, if that's possible, great, but it, it might not be possible. At that school where I combined two grade levels, we actually had to have our concert at the high school nearby that was a pain. So you, you really need to think about what's possible for your school. Um, I think there are really three types of concert or performance for students, sort of three general things. Um, there's the, the traditional performance or concert. I use, I use concert sort of interchangeably, but I think there's the performance, the concert. There's an informance, which that word gets used a lot and not always defined very well, so I'll talk about that in a second. And then the third I would say is like a, a sharing. Um, and a lot of times that's an in-class sharing. So let me talk about those three things and I'll actually work backwards. So the sharing I think is something that some people can do and it works better if you're in a smaller school. Um, a sharing is when you invite parents literally to come sit in class with their students. Normally for something like that, you wouldn't do a big production or performance. Uh, normally it would be like, here's the process that we use and here's how we do it and you're gonna see it and you're gonna sit in and you can do some things with your student. And that takes a lot of planning of what am I gonna show them? How is it gonna look successful? 
I still want them to see our daily procedure, but I want it to like work well, you know? Um, and then also, how am I gonna get those parents in? Um, I have a good friend um, who does this and he breaks it up over a couple different weeks um, and he'll have, um, you know, he'll send out a, a, a basically a sign up, an online sign up and say, when, you, when can you come in? Um, here are times it can sign up and half the class can come one day and half the class can come in the next day. That works for him because he sees classes more than one time a week. I don't. I see them basically once every two weeks. So if I were to do that, it would be basically a full month of p possibility of parents coming into my class every day. And, and that just stresses me out because it's an eight day rotation. And so if I say half the class comes in on the first eight days, half the class comes in on the second eight days, I mean, and then if parents want to make up or whatever, it just, it would be stressful. Um, so I don't personally do that. But if I worked in a smaller school, I think it'd be so cool to be able to invite parents in to do that. Um, so that's sort of a sharing, an in-class thing. Another thing you can do is an informance. An informance is like a performance, but you're informing the parents. You're telling them about what's happening in your classroom and you're giving them an insight into what really happens in your classroom. So it's sort of like a sharing on a larger scale. You're basically inviting parents into the gym or into the performance space or whatever, your auditorium, whatever you have, um, your cafeteria, and you're saying, this is what it looks like in our class. This is, in a nutshell, what we do in our class, but you're just seeing it on a grand scale because everyone's here all at once. Um, and so an informants is really not like, we've got a story, we've got a, you know, there's not really a through line like that. It's more of like, this is sort of what we're doing. You might take time to highlight, like these are the standards that we're hitting with this. This is why this specific thing is important. Uh, you might say, this song is so great because it expands the vocal range and that's really difficult for younger singers, but now, you know, their voices have matured and they're able to do it. You know, you give a little bit more backstory. It's not about like the, you know, the, the story of the musical, but it's more of like, here's the story of your kids and here's why we're doing it this way. Because a lot of parents don't understand what actually happens in music class. They think we just like sing songs and do the limbo, I don't know. But an informant sort of helps that and helps explain to parents what you do and why. I think the difficulty with informances is it is very easy to make that sort of boring for parents because if they don't understand really what's going on and they think it's a performance with or a musical or whatever and they walk into it with that expectation, they might be a little disappointed that they're not seeing the flashy stuff and they're not seeing the dance and whatever. So if you do an informants type show, I would say try and still maybe have a showstopper song or a something that that feels a little bit more like you're you're tying the whole thing with a bow so that parents feel more connected and are like, oh, but that, that was cool. I learned a lot and it was fun. And I got a picture of my kid doing jazz hands or whatever, you know, like I've got the scrapbook moment and we learned a lot and it, it was really valuable in total. So the sharing in class, the informants, which is like a sharing on a grand scale. And then I think that you can have sort of more of a performance or a concert, which is I think what a lot of us did when we were growing up. Um, and that's more of like, there is a, maybe a storyline or there's a through line somehow. Um, maybe you're telling a story, maybe you're doing a musical, but really it's not so much like here are the standards and here's what we're doing, but here are these fun songs and we're sort of putting on a show. I don't think that there's anything necessarily wrong with that. I think people who are informants minded would, you know, sometimes are a little bit disparaging towards that because it's, it really does mean that sometimes you take time out of your normal curriculum to do something else. That said, there is absolutely reason to do performances and do musicals and do all that sort of whole sort of thing. I mean, how many teachers love musicals and Broadway and whatever, and that is a thriving industry that is not necessarily like, and here are the standards. You know, it's different from the concert hall, but it is still its own thing and still absolutely valuable. So for me, what I try and do to sort of strike a balance of, I want them to have some musical time, I want them to have some informants, I want them to have some sharing. At different grade levels, I do different things. So in kindergarten and first, it's it's a little bit more of a, you know, here are some fun songs brought together with a through line, uh, brought together with a little bit of a story, and I'm also teaching you what we're doing in our class. Maybe some instruments come out. Well, a little bit older, we do maybe a folk song concert or maybe um, an informant style concert where you see some of the uh, movement standards or some of the playing standards or whatever and we bring that all together. 
In older grades, sometimes we do musicals where it's like a legit musical um, or a mini musical. I'll talk about that in a second. Or maybe it's, um, you know, more instrument based or, or whatever. But I try and vary it up so that if a kid sees me and has me as a teacher from kindergarten through fifth grade, they'll have a variety of experiences and the parents will see them in a lot of different situations. Um, but that's, I mean, it's just the way I do it. You can do anything you want. Um, as far as musicals go, there, there are like the mini musicals like Disney Junior, like Annie Junior or uh, Lion King Junior or whatever, which is really a musical that a lot of people already know that's sort of broken down for younger voices. Then there's something like um, this, like a John Jacobson style musical you can buy from West Music or Music K8 or wherever. And it is really not have anything to do with like Annie or, you know, some already established story, but it has its own story. And, and songs that were made for that. Um, usually it comes with like an accompaniment track or something. And then um, there's also what I do a lot, which is sort of a mix and match, where you take a little bit of this and a little bit of this and a little bit of this, and you can sort of shove it together and make your own thing. If you write your own story or your own, um, you know, words that, that go in between songs, you can create a story that happens and sort of make your own thing. For instance, I took a couple years ago this idea of space invaders, of aliens that land on the playground and they're rude, mean aliens. And basically I took three or four different like music K8 songs. I took a couple folk songs, some other things. I sort of strung them together um, and wrote commentary in between. And that was our musical. For parents, it felt like a musical. I chose songs on purpose that I thought were good for the kids good for character building, good for their musical growth, and then they all sort of came together. But to parents, it sort of looked like a musical, but it really was what I had created. I actually did a whole live video about Space Invaders, so if you're interested in that, um, you can go back into the video archive and I'll try and link it so you can see everything that was involved in that specific musical, and, or musical, in that show, and why we did it. Um, okay, so, so what is a concert? I spent a lot of time talking, sorry. But, um, performance or concert, and then I'd say an informance or a sharing, and then that performance or concert or whatever is, is whatever you make it. The one thing I would say, uh, this is all philosophy and ideas and why you should do it, but the one thing I would say is that we should not judge other music teachers based on what they decide to do. Because again, it really has to do with your school community, it really has to do with your students, and no two schools are alike. The more that I blog, the more that I talk to people around the country or go do workshops around the country, the more I see that every school is absolutely different. My school, right next to the school down the road, I have 1,200 students. They have 500 students. I don't know why the district chose to do it that way, but they did. Our socioeconomic status is almost exactly the same. The background and makeup of student population, ethnicity, whatever, is almost exactly the same. Just a different school. And it is absolutely a different community. So it doesn't make sense that we should do the exact same things. So what I do would not be the same as what Meredith would do or what Nathan and the other school would do or what Jennifer and my other school would do, all my neighboring schools. They all do their own different things and that's okay. And we should not as teachers say, well, you know, you can do it that way, but I'm gonna do an informants because I don't wanna take away from curriculum time or I'm gonna do a musical because my kids are so awesome or whatever, just what you should maybe do instead is say, hey, I noticed you're doing Annie Jr. Do you need help with the lights? Or I noticed you're doing an informants. Can I come and help wheel on xylophones? Or I noticed that you decided to do a concert have you thought about involving your PTA? Or I have this great experience where I did blah, 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 and, and give an encouraging, helpful comment instead of a, well, you can do it that way, but I think it's wrong. Or you can do it that way, but I don't know if you'd wanna do it that way because you know, I do, no, just like, just be nice, be kind, and help one another be better. That's what I'm just all I'm gonna say. Just don't judge and be helpful. Okay, because we all do our own thing for different reasons. All right, all that said, I'm flipping a page here. <laughs> all that said, um, that's, you know, why do a musical, why do it? I think it is so valuable to have our students perform if that is at all possible. Um, I'm currently at the time where I see kids literally once every two weeks. So I'm getting to the point where I'm about to go to my principal and say, I don't know if I can do concerts, one, because to do a concert, it would block out like two months of normal curriculum time to plan for this thing. And I don't feel good asking kids to say like, hey, remember that song? 
we learned two weeks ago. Here's verse two, let's go. You know, like, I, it feels bad for me to say that. So in some situations, maybe a concert isn't an option, but we have all these performance standards. We're trying to get students to feel comfortable standing in front of others and do things. So if you can do one, great. Anyway, but maybe you can't. Um, okay, so now I wanna talk about what would you do before a concert? What do you do during or day of concert? And what do you do afterwards? Um, because I think there's a lot of really valuable stuff we could talk about. Um, one of the things that I always try and do as I'm getting ready for a concert is I do a, I know this is backwards, a concert checklist. And I actually wrote a whole blog post about what to do going into a concert, getting ready for a concert. And so this concert checklist, it's just my old checklist. I've updated it um, recently, but it has a lot of maybe helpful stuff and there's a free download on that blog post about you know what you might wanna do. So for instance, um, you may wanna, uh, a little ways out, start communicating with parents. Send a letter home with kids. Send an email out to parents. Post it on your web page. Give it to your school secretary to put on the official calendar. Have it go on the rotating marquee if y'all have one of those out by the you know front drive or whatever. Find ways to communicate with parents because there are a lot of really cool ways to do that. Um, if there's going to be a curriculum night or an open house, put out a sign that says November 15th, third grade concert. Do whatever you can because parents, I mean, if you send it a thousand different ways, somebody's still gonna be like, oh wait, there's a concert tomorrow? Yes! So start early. So this is on my do things early part of the checklist. Um, start talking with parents soon. If you have a bulletin board outside your room, use it to advertise for the concert. Um, there are a lot of things you can do. Um, also on my checklist, um, figure out if you need extra risers to come in. Figure out if you need speakers or microphones to be set up or to come in from your district. Um, what about auditions? How's that gonna work? Costumes, sets, who's gonna help you with that? All things that you should know far in advance. So that's why I created this checklist because I always forget that. Um, so starting here is great. And I have a separate one for third grade and a separate one for fourth grade and seventh, so that I can sort of check off as I go. I did that, I did that, I did that. And that's sort of helpful. Um, but make your, you, you can use mine if you want. You can use it as a template and start adding things in your own. Um, you can make it look a lot prettier than this, but if you want that, that's there. Um, I would think also about what are your physical space needs? Are you gonna do a show where kids are gonna move? Are you gonna do something where they're all gonna just stand on risers? Do you have enough risers? How are they gonna get there if you need to borrow risers? I'm, those are things to think about way ahead of time and then figure out who do you need to ask to answer those questions? But it's, it's good questions to ask. Maybe your answer will be, well, now we need to start having this at the middle school, or now we need to have this at the community center or whatever, but those are good questions to ask early rather than later. <laughs> okay, um, there's so much more to think about. Um, one of the things I always try and do is have a backup plan. Um, let's see, so, my backup plans, um, if what happens if your music player dies, if you're using canned music? Okay, I have a backup for that. Um, what happens if a kid doesn't show up who has a speaking part? Can you just cut out their speaking part and it doesn't affect the story? Or do you need to reassign that to someone? Do you have a ringer in the class who can maybe pick it up? Um, one of the things that I learned from my friend Brett Scarborough when I first started teaching like the first year was, um, if you do like a musical like this, like Holiday Musical, which I am currently doing this year, if you have um, a main character, Marty the Moose is in literally every scene, um, instead of relying on one kid to show up who must be there, um, what Brett did and what I now do, I stole the idea from him, it's a beautiful idea. In one scene, the kid wearing the antlers in this class, in Miss Cacabone's class, is Marty. In the next scene, after that next song, the kid in Miss Bennett's class who's wearing the antlers is Marty. In the next scene, the kid from Miss, you know, what, whoever's wearing the antlers is Marty for that scene. Parents don't question it. Parents are all about it. They get it. Whoever's wearing the costume, that's Marty. Somebody else calls them Marty. He's Marty. So like, you don't, don't rely on that one kid because that kid's going to get strep throat or, you know, whatever is gonna happen. So what I would say is if you can, scene by scene, just break it up and give the parts to different kids. You get more kids involved, 
you might find that that one kid who you're like, mm, I don't know, it might flake out, might be amazing, but needs the opportunity. So um, I, I, in every class, I have uh, my leads in literally every class. And then the cool thing is, if you do have that kid, that Marty, not show up the day of, you can go to another Marty in another class and be like, do you know the Marty part from that other class? Or you could go to another kid in the same class and be like, the Marty costume would fit you. Can you be Marty in this situation? And it's nice to have a backup. Um, okay, speaking of other backups, what do you do if you need help? What if you do if you need uh, putting up posters on the day of the show? What do you do if you need somebody to like start a camera or whatever? F find those people early and think about what parents or whatever you can ask early um, to maybe have ready to go in case you need them. Okay, let's see. Um, oh, and then, <laughs> yeah. Make a checklist of time of, of must-haves, of things that you absolutely must have or else the show can't go on. Because a lot of times you're like, oh my gosh, this thing isn't working. But actually, you're fine. If the confetti cannon doesn't go off, it doesn't ruin the show. Or, you know, what if those lights aren't on or whatever, it's a little bit darker, but it's fine. There are some like must-haves, like mm, the building must be unlocked. You know, you need parents need to get in. Or um, I must have some way to make some sort of music. You know, like there must be a speaker system or whatever. There are some non-negotiables, but figure out what those are and then have backups. One time my, my principal was helping me set up and she was like, um, David, does this checklist say the backup for the backup? And I was like, yeah, and that's the backup for the backup. So just in case that doesn't work and that doesn't work, there's this thing. She was like, okay, I think you got this taken care, taken care of. Anyway, those are all good things to have the backups. Um, one other thing before you get involved is how are you going to get other people involved? How are you going to get other people to be a part of this? So my first example is PTA. Maybe your PTA would be happy to hand out programs and greet people. Maybe they want to just say like a two minute thing before the show of, hey, if you want to join PTA. Maybe your PTA wants to take care of putting away all the chairs. May, you know, like all those things, but email the PTA and say, hey, how can we be involved? I have all these parents coming to the show and I'd love to have that be publicity for you. What can we do together? And that's, that's a cool thing to do. Another thing I, I try and do is email out to, to teachers beforehand and say, hey, I have this show going up. Um, it's gonna happen on so-and-so night. I'd really love if you'd be there. But also, um, you know, it's gonna be about uh, animals. So if you wanna do like an in-class craft that you wanna put up in the hallway the week before about animals, that'd be cool. Or would your class wanna like make some decorations for the show that like match something they're doing in class or whatever? Um, my example of this is um, when I did the Space Invaders show, I sent out a little essay of like, if I were a Space Invader or whatever, that the kids who are in the show wrote out and drew a little picture of an alien and then I posted that out in the hallway so parents who got there early because they always come like an hour early can like go find their kid's name and read that thing and look at other kids and whatever and that's so fun. Um, another example is I on the year I did a, a show called What Do You Do With An Idea based on the book What Do You Do With An Idea uh, by Kobe Yamada. Um, I emailed the STEM teacher and was like hey this is like a STEM show so what if, and she was like, I'm on board. <laughs> so what happened was, what if was, what if um, before or after the show, you had some of their STEM lessons set up in the cafeteria across the hall, and I could say, hey parents, um, if you want, you can go across the hall and your student can show you their special STEM project that they've been working on for the past two weeks, and they really wanna show, you know, whatever. So many teachers are like, yes, I want to have the opportunity to do that. I didn't even think to ask you whatever, or I didn't know your theme was the carnival because that's what my classroom theme is, or I didn't know that you were going to do a whole show about feelings because we're learning these you know, social emotional lessons in class or whatever. It would fit so perfectly to show off to parents. Yeah, if you don't communicate that with those teachers, they're busy too and they don't realize. So ask parents, ask parent groups, what can you do to connect with your community because there might be such cool opportunities. Maybe you're gonna do a carnival show and somebody's dad on the PTA owns a bounce house and a popcorn machine and wants to bring it in for free and 
You know, like who knows until you ask. So, or wants to, you know, make cotton candy for the whole school. I don't know, but it, it, you won't know either unless you ask. Okay, those are all things to do before. Uh, I wanna show you a couple things to do the day of or during the show um, and give you some ideas. Um, one of the things I try and do before all of my concerts is have like pre-show music. So when parents walk into the gym, they're not just like sitting twiddling their thumbs in a completely like empty, quiet gym. So I get, I get on Spotify and I find basically like kid friendly or themed music that matches. When I did the Space Invader concert, I had like Star Trek music and Star Wars and like Lost in Space themes and like all, all the sort of background music that parents would be like, okay, I get it. That's funny, right? Um, for the, the feelings concert, I did like, um, hooked on a feeling, uh, maybe not even that one, but like happy by Pharrell and like, I mean, all of these like songs that talk about feelings or emotions or whatever playing in the background as people come in and the parents like loved it. And then they were talking to one another and not just sitting quietly, like feeling awkward. So that's sort of fun to do. Um, another fun thing to, that I try and do is I do a pre concert slideshow. Okay, and technology, technology gods be nice to me, but I wanna show you my pre-concert slideshow. And I know I've tried to show you PowerPoints before during these videos, it doesn't always work. So let's see if it's gonna work. And then we're gonna take a little tour of my office. Oh, it's this phone is telling me something weird. Okay, so we've got Instagram looking here. Okay, let's see if I can turn you around Facebook. There we go. Okay, great. Okay, it's working, let's see. So this is my uh, pre-concert sort of slideshow. Um, and this I create ahead of time, obviously. Sorry, Instagram. And what I do is that I usually have this set um, on PowerPoint. One of the cool things you can do in PowerPoint is set like a timer. So every eight seconds, it'll just auto advance to the next screen. I have that shut off so I can just show you, but um, that's an option. Um, so I usually just set like maybe 20 slides and I just have it sort of rotate on its own. So this show is called Growing Up. So at the top, it just says Woodstock Elementary School Presents Growing Up featuring first grade. And you know that there are like 12 moms and grandmas or whatever who have taken photos of this because they want to put this in the scrapbook. Okay, great. But it's nice to have a sort of a title slide or like a, a picture slide that parents can look at. Then I try and like do everything I can to get parents to realize that I am trying to reach out to them like a thousand different ways. So find pictures of kids in action on Instagram. Here's my Instagram handle for my classroom. Okay, another growing up slide with a different ethnicity because I wanna represent all students in my classroom. Okay, great, same thing. This was a clip art pack I found on Teachers Pay Teachers for not that much. Find information about what's happening in music class on Twitter. Oh, look, there's my Twitter handle for my classroom. Okay, great. Growing up, not women this time, awesome, okay. And actually, I think for the concert, I flipped it around so it was boy, girl, boy, girl, whatever, but, you know, options. Follow WES online. Okay, so there's my handle for my Instagram. There was our general school handle, the PTA, um, our iPad teacher, and the media center. All of, all of their um, usernames. Great. Find them and follow them. Oh, look, another title slide. Because, again, if it just rotates back and forth, that's fine. Parents don't care. Do you want to support us online? Here's our Donors Choose page. Again, if they don't know it's there, they won't be able to do it. So I just put a, a picture and the website, an easy way for them to find us. And then look, just another random growing up slide. Are you interested in joining Woodstock PTA? Check with your child's homeroom teacher or email woodstockptapress at yahoo.com. Again, PTA loved this because they got a couple emails out of it, but even a couple is more than zero, so they were all about it. Growing up, oh look, another random growing up slide. Donate your unused musical items to the Woodstock Elementary Room. Talk to Mr. Rao for more details. All of this stuff is, this is just like free advertising time because they're literally just sitting there, you know, in the gym waiting. And so if you have this rotating in, you can put whatever you want up there. You could say, check the lost and found before you leave because it's getting really full. You could say, hey, we really need some more Lysol wipes in the music room. You could put anything up there and this is your chance to talk to all of those people. Maybe get them to follow you on social media if that's something your school does. You know, maybe just say like, hey, we're gonna have a field trip on whatever day Can we, if you're willing to volunteer and come with us or whatever, you know. There are so many options. Or do you play a musical instrument? Would you like to come in and talk to our school or talk to the class or whatever? This is your chance to do that. So 
pre-concert slideshow, I would encourage you to try it. Um, and if you're not sure, you know, like, would this work for me? Really, all you have to do, sorry, I'm moving things around. All you have to do is try it once, and if it doesn't work, don't do it again. But it really doesn't take that much work, because then, once I've done it for one concert, I reuse almost exactly all the same slides, except for those title slides, for the next concert. So I just change the words and whatever, and, and I, I reuse those things. Okay. And then I, have a, I usually have a slideshow for the concert, if possible, and, you know, if not, we make things work. Okay, I'm sorry, I keep moving stuff around. Okay, great, so pre-concert slideshow. I'm sorry, Instagram, you're a little tilted. Okay, so let's see. Um, what else, let's see. So pre-show so pre music, pre-show slideshow, um, I always try and have copies of standing charts, where kids stand on the risers, what row they are, what space they are. I have multiple copies because I have kids line up in like a holding pattern outside of the gym and then I walk them in. Well, I'd, I don't stress and like spend lots of time on you walk in just like this and you go up to your spot and then you stand there, whatever, because they're probably not gonna do that on the night of the concert. So if I stress out and spend multiple hours trying to teach that and then they don't do it, that's wasted time. So what I usually do is I have them line up in their general order, they walk in, and then I just check them. I usually have their homeroom teacher check them. I have a specials teacher check them because they've done all the practices with us. And then we get up there and we're good and then we go. Um, usually, I, things that ki I think kids should know, how do you get onto the risers? They should have done it at least once before the concert. Um, what do you do on the risers? What are some things so that you don't fall off the back or knock somebody in the face or whatever? That's a good thing to talk about. And then how do you find your parents after that? How do you find them once the show is over? And so um, those are all things you wanna communicate and I could tell you how I do it, but it really depends on your space and your parents and your school. And you know, if you're up on a stage and parents are out in an audience or if you're just in the gym or whatever, I think it really depends. Um, somebody asked a great question, do you ever combine concerts with a choir or orchestra program? Yes, I have in the past. Usually those people go first and they'll go in front of the empty risers and kids don't come on until after because sometimes the kids are the same things or, you know, whatever, are in both the orchestra and the concert. You know, I don't know. It depends on your school and how things work. Um, but you can absolutely share with your strings teacher or your band teacher or whatever. Sorry. Um, it just depends on how you want to make that work. So, um... I don't know, that's up to you. But I think kids need to know how to get on, what to do when they're on the risers, how to get off. Um, you should have a list of your props and your needs, things in the concert that you must have that you don't wanna to forget to be able to do. Um, let's see, um, how to get on the risers. How are you gonna to communicate to kids when they're on the risers? Um, I, in my blog post that I wrote, I have these little hokey signs, but one is just a smile. One is an eyes on me, one is a, be quiet, um, and one is, uh, I can't hear you, so it's an ear I put by my ear. Um, so those are things that you wanna be able to communicate with kids during the concert. Maybe you have a attention getting signal, maybe you have something else, but it's good to be able to know, like how are you gonna communicate to kids during the concert? Because maybe they don't, you know, maybe they're gonna get off track. Probably some of them are. How do you get them back on track? How do you bring them back from the fold? Communicating with them during is a great thing. Um, let's see. One other thing that I think this is just something that I think about is like, where do you as the teacher go? Um, I am not a person who stands up and conducts during the concert. Like I, because I say to kids all the time, it's like, your parents aren't coming to see me. They're not coming to listen to me sing. They're coming to hear you. Um, so I would say whatever you do with, with yourself, I mean, I sort of say like, as much as you can, get out of the way. Um, so I, I sort of say like, you know, I, if I'm going to be out in front of the kids, if I'm going to help them with the actions or whatever, that I like sit down. I have one of those like beach chairs that's like a low, low seat. And so I sit really low and kids can still see me, but I am not in the eye line between parents and kids. Cause like, I don't want them looking at the back of my head. I don't want them being like, mm, why do you choose those pants? Like, I don't want them to think about that. So I get out of the way. If I can be like off the stage on the side if I can be at the piano, if I can be just sitting way down low, 
I do that. I try and get out of the way so that I'm not in a parent's view because they're not coming to see me. I mean, they're coming to see their kids shine. They're not coming to see Mr. Rao conducting or whatever. They're coming to see me. So if you still feel like I need to be in front of them for them to see to hold everything together because it's being brought together with duct tape and Elmer's glue, then stand in front of them, but find a way that you can maybe get out of the focus if possible. Um, another thing you need to think about, will you or someone else speak at the concert, introduce the kids, uh, talk after? Um, that's something to think about. Do you want your principal to do it? Do you want your fine arts person to do it? Those are all good questions to ask early, but plan on what they're gonna say. Like if your principal's like, I will come and say something, but I need you to write it out for me. I've had principals say that, okay. So I, I make that work um, and I write it out. Uh, other principals are like, no, 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 I got this. And I'm like, ooh, I would rather give you a script. <laughs> Because I, I never know what those parents, what those principals are going to say, but you know, whatever. Um, and the last thing I would say is always, always, if you're going to say something, I would always say, make sure you include thank yous. If your principal's not going to say it, you should say it. Even if your principal says it, maybe you should say it. So that you thank, you know, you, the, the homeroom teachers and your administration and your janitors and parents for supporting and bringing their kids to the concert. Like, Thank people, even if you don't think they did anything, thank them because one, maybe if they didn't do anything, they'll be like, mm, he's saying me, I didn't really do much. Maybe next year I should, okay. Or maybe they did all this work behind the scenes that you can't tell. Like one time there was one teacher who I thought was like super not interested and like not at all like helpful, like wasn't reinforcing anything, like didn't, I was like, she doesn't care. She drove two kids to the concert on the night of the concert who couldn't make it. She drove them there. There was another time where it was like, the, the teacher the day of was like, we've been practicing these songs every day in class. And I was like, you are the most uninterested of all. You know, like, so I would say thank them anyway, even if you don't realize their contribution, they probably did something. And if nothing else, D is exactly right. They showed up to see the concert. They probably don't contractually have to be there. And even if they do, whatever, just thank them anyway. Um, okay, so that's sort of my during the show. Let me talk to you a little bit about after the show. What do you do? I actually did a whole blog post about what do you do after the concert, okay? Um, I would say if you can, have students do an evaluation of their own performance. It's in our standards. It's not, it's not like bite your nails, tough to do. Um, and you, there are a lot of cool resources, like my friend Corey Bloom, on, on, she's on Teachers Pay Teachers, has all these great like performance evaluation sheets and listening evaluation. If you recorded it, have them listen to themselves and evaluate themselves and, and give them a little bit of criteria about like what is good and what maybe we could fix and whatever. And um, it, that's a great thing to have students do because then they are more invested and they don't just think like, well, that's done. You know, it's, we did this for a reason, right? So that's great to be, let students do. Um, I always do thank you cards, like handwritten thank yous to all the homeroom teachers, to my principals. Um, I have kids deliver them. So I, I just write out a little thank you, handwritten. Um, I usually try and make it specific to each person. Like, thank you so much for, you know, doing the streamers or whatever for the concert, or thanks so much for being just so involved or, you know, whatever you're gonna say. And then instead of a stamp, I put one of those little dove chocolates. I'm like, who doesn't love that? I mean, maybe some people can't have that, but they could give it to a friend, I don't know. But they, they could keep the little like message inside the Dove chocolate because that's the best chocolate. Anyway, um, so I use, put that as a stamp. Teachers love that. And they love being thanked. They love that you they feel appreciated. Um, I, I always try and rethink and replan, like what would I do differently next time? Um, wh what might I change? Um, and then I leave myself notes about that and I leave myself ideas about that. Um, document and save like one of everything. I'll show you that in just a second. Leave a note for yourself. Um, leave show notes, leave, you know, uh, things specific about the show of like, I would maybe cut down this song or I would maybe, you know, maybe I would make sure we do this one faster. I would spend more time preparing this one because it was harder than I thought and it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. You might also leave specific things about your school. I usually, I usually write down like made 200 programs, ran out or made 200 programs, had 50 left over 
or whatever. It gives me ideas about my specific school, but I, I try and write that out. So let me show you um, just an example of me saving some stuff. Um, so I did a show uh, in 2014 and I redid it again in 2017. Um, a little bit different. One year I did it, um, it was like space themed, earth. No, it was about, it was about feelings. It was feeling theme. And then the next year I did it a little bit different. Um, so I kept a program. Um, I had this one translated in English and Spanish because they needed it at that school. I kept a copy of the strings program because they played before we did. So good to remember like, oh yeah, maybe they want to be involved in that again this year. Um, I saved any notes that I sent home to parents. I sent, I saved a copy of the script. Um, I saved a copy of the standing chart, how I had them stand on stage. Um, not that you're going to have the same exact teachers, but it helps you remember like, oh yeah, this is how I did it. Um, I kept copies of where I got the music. This was a Music K-8 sort of pulled together show. Um, I kept my checklist from before, from the first time. Um, and then I kept, you know, just anything else that I thought I would need from that specific show. So let's see what the other folder has. This is when I did it like three or four years later. Um, and this time I saved. Um, oh, I added a part where we did... Um, like we had, it was like a little vaudevillian sort of like dance or whatever to this. And we made our, we made, it, each kid made their own face on a paper plate. So I kept one of those to remind myself that we did that. Um, I used this visual. <laughs> so I kept it to help myself remember like, oh yeah, that song was successful because I made that last minute visual. Maybe think about how you're going to do that before you do that the next time. Um, I updated um, how I do programs. So I kept one of those. Um, on the same time on the front just has a little description about what the concert is, the songs, so that parents know like, man, we got one more song, so we might as well stick around. And then um, all the list of student names on the back, which is a lot of work, but I think it's worth it. Um, depends on, on how you do it. So I save all that stuff. I usually try and also save like a copy of the, a digital copy of the music if possible. Like maybe a scan of the music that I use, plus also maybe like a CD version or a burned version of the music so that the next time I do it, I don't have to like go digging for hours trying to find the music. Um, but I save all of that stuff and I sort of bundle it up. And when I do a show that's um, like maybe like a canned show, like from a, a musical or something, in this one, I took all of that and I, um, I paper clipped it in the back so that I still have all of that stuff um, and I can use it again. And this one, <laughs> this is fun. My principal wanted a written script of the things that she should say before and after. So I wrote in all caps, before the show, after the show, things she should say. And it works out so great. It was awesome. Anyway, um, somebody asked, how do you make your standing chart? I think um, on Excel, I just went in and just made a couple boxes. It's not fancy, but um, this I took the time to type out so that it's not like my s scrawling whatever handwriting that I'm writing furiously and fast. Meg says, don't forget photo ops. What I always try and do is before, oh my gosh, you just said it before the show. I say like, you've got four minutes. They haven't done any dancing yet. Their costumes look perfect. Take your photos now. And in four minutes, we'll be done. And that's it. And don't come up during the show. I don't say that, but I'm saying like, there's not gonna be an opportunity during the show to come up and take photos. So come up and take them now. You have four whole minutes. And for the last minute, I sit at the piano and play the Jeopardy theme. <laughs> and I'm like, you have one minute, you have 30 seconds. And then but that gets them out of their like, we got to take pictures mode and they take them all and then they go sit down. And then as soon as the show is over, all the kids leave. And I say, if you want to stay and take a photo with just your student on the set or with the costumes or with whatever, feel free. But most people are like, let's get out of here. So those are some things that you might want to think about for photo op. Okay, sorry. Um, rethink and replan, save everything, save one at least of everything that you might have used along the way. And then I would say one more thing that I do as a follow-up is I send a parent follow-up email. And it's basically just like, I gotta brag on your kids. They did so good. It was so great. We didn't really have enough time to plan all this because of crazy schedules and blah, blah, blah. But they pulled it off and I'm so proud of them. Thank you so much for encouraging them to be a part of music. Thank you so much for bringing them to the concert. They looked great in their costumes. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. And one of the other things that I say, I'm not just, you know, just pumping up the parents and the kids, but I do that. 
But I also say, if you took any photos that you thought were really great, or remember after the show, some people came up with their kids and had them take their photo with me, I would love a copy of any of those. Or if you have photos you'd be willing to share that I could put up on our school website for other people to see and have for their scrapbooks, I'd love to have those too. And so I do get a lot of great feedback from parents about the show, about, you know, maybe they wouldn't have sent those emails on their own. But when I send an email to them, a lot of times I get great feedback back from them. Okay, I have just a couple minutes. I'd love to show you just some of the shows and some of the themes that I've done in case you're still watching, if you're still watching, um, to just show you some of the things that I've done that have been very successful and I would do again. Um, and maybe it will give you some ideas. Um, this concert, the Feeling Good concert, really, honestly, it was just like three or four or five um, music Kate songs with maybe a folk song or two sprung in there that, that are about feelings and emotions. So there was one about, um, it, we did If You're Happy and You Know It, and we changed up like all different kinds of emotions. And we did Happy by Pharrell. We did a little dance to it. And then um, there was like, there was a sick song I found somewhere, but it's just all about emotions and feelings. Um, we did the song, uh, I told you already about the Space Invaders concert and, and mentioned that I have an old live video in the archive all about this with all the things I use. So if you're interested in that, you can go back and look at that. Um, I have another video in my live feed about the book, uh, What Do You Do With an Idea uh, by Kobe Yamada. And in that, in that specific program, I took the book and used it sort of as um, an, a framework and I built songs sort of around that idea of what, what do ideas do and how do ideas grow and how do you, you know, what do you do with that? And with that one, each class got one specific song that they showed how they took an idea and ran with it. And that specific one um, was really cool because it really did feature um, a lot of instruments and a lot of like songs from the volumes if you're an ORF person. Um, and it had um, some extra things that really just showed like canon and a theme and variation and what it, where it, where it showed ideas growing and changing in a, in a very musical way. So I talk about that in a live video if you're interested. Um, I have, let me talk a little bit about winter shows, um, because I know that we're getting into winter season, um, and there are a lot of people who are like, what do I do for Christmas? Um, oh, one more. I bought this my very first year, let's pass it on, because my cooperating teacher, Debbie Gray, had used it, and she didn't use all of it, and I've never used all of it in a row, but there's some really fun songs to pull out and use over and over for different shows. So that's a cool one, um, and it's really not all that expensive. Um, that one's by Michael and Jill Galina, Gallina, I don't know how to say their last name. Okay, winter shows, some of my favorites. Last year I did a Berry Merry Holiday, about all the bears in the world coming together for a big holiday party. John Jacobson and John Higgins. It's great, it's adorable. And it is holiday, but it is not super holiday specific. Like they don't sing any like Christmas carols or anything. So that's sort of nice. Um, I've always wanted to do this one called Flakes. Um, it is another John Jacobson and John Higgins. But somehow, every time I have moved to another school, I'm like, I'm going to do that show. The person before me did it like four years in a row. So I can't do it. Um, I've heard a lot of people say that Bugs has been very successful for them. And then there's also a Bugs Christmas. I've never tried it. But a lot of friends who I know and trust have used it and say that it's wonderful. Um, and one more thing about these shows, if you go on musickk8.com, a lot of these shows that are listed, you can listen to excerpts from like each of the songs in the show to give you an idea of like, mm, I don't want to do that one, or mm, I do that, I will do that one. It really depends. Um, Christine had a great question. Do you always use the same grade level for Christmas programs or do you switch it? At my old school, I switched it. At my current school, they like literally in my job interview, they're like, if you get hired, fourth grade does the winter musical. And I was like, oh, okay. So that's not something I feel comfortable switching yet, but I, I did in the past. And, and some winter shows you'll find are better for older grades and some are better for younger grades. Um, this one I loved when I found it. I worked at a school that was like 87% English language learner, almost all Mexican-American immigrants. And I was like, man, I feel bad doing all these concerts and not doing like any songs in Spanish or anything where like, those grandparents who are sitting through this and like, I don't understand a lot of this, but I'm here to support my kid. 
Well, I found this show called Fiesta Legend of the Poinsettia, Poinsettia, and it's by Sally Albrecht and Jay Aldhouse, who you probably know that name, um, Alfred Publishing. And this is the story of the poinsettia plant and the legend, the folk tale behind it. And there are these beautiful songs. There's some Spanish stuff in here. And like, if nothing else, the parents of my kids who are from Mexico knew the story. And so it was so special for them to come in and we sang some of it in Spanish and they, they just loved it. Even if you don't have kids who are from Mexico or kids who speak Spanish, it is a really beautiful story. Go find it on Music K8 and listen to it because it's super cool. Okay, and I'm going to finish with the one that I'm doing this year, a holiday moose -icle. Um, and it's about Marty the Moose who wants to come and pull Santa's sleigh and the reindeer are like, no way, you can't do it. It was, It's like a ra it's a Rudolph sort of situation where they're like, we don't want you to be involved, sorry, you can't, you can't be our friend. You can't sit with us. And so it's a mean girl sort of a situation. Anyway, Holiday Musical, it's super cute, super sweet. There's some really fun songs in here. But the thing I love about most of these musicals is that in almost every one, there's a partner song. In almost every one, there are uh, options for harmony on a lot of the songs. In almost every one, there, I mean, just there, there are challenging things in here that we could and should be doing in the classroom already. And they show up in here because the people who write these are like good teachers. So... I don't hate on these musicals for the most part because a lot of the times they do have challenging music for our students. So they're good. Check them out. Like I said, go to musick8.com and look through a bunch of them and listen. Listen before you buy them. And then email the people in your district and say, or people near you and say, people in your ORF chapter and say, do you have this? Can I borrow it and listen to it to see if I want to buy it for myself? And a lot of the times you might get your school to buy it, but like, I bought this my with my personal money and it costs a little money, but guess what? When I left that school, it came with me and I'm doing it again. So like I paid the whatever $79, but now I've done it twice and I probably will do it again in my school career. So I'm gonna, it's gonna end up being like 15 bucks a show, you know, by the time I'm done. But it's nice that like I've done this, even if you stay at the same school forever, pull it out again in seven years and use it again and use all the stuff you saved and don't reinvent the wheel. So anyway, think about buying it yourself if you can. If you want students or PTA to buy it or school to buy it, that's great. But preview it before if you can and really decide if it's right for you, if, if that's something you're interested in doing. Um, okay, I've talked long enough. Thank you for all the people who left questions and comments or whatever. I can't wait to go through some of those and answer them, but I know we're out of time tonight. In the comments on the on makemomentsmatter.org slash videos, the, the recap page, I'm going to put links to um, the blog post I talked about, the checklist I talked about, um, to anything else that you're like, hey, what about that thing? Leave it in the questions and I will make sure that it goes in the links page. Or send me a private message if you're like, hey, I really want to hear about this specific show or why did you choose that one or whatever. Send me a message and I, will, I promise I will respond email me, makemomentsmatter at gmail.com or send me a message on Instagram or Instagram or Facebook. Um, anyway, I hope you had a fun time hearing about musicals or concerts or informances or whatever and why to do them and what you might do. I hope this has been helpful, um, a departure from the norm, but I, I hope it's been worth the time. Thanks so much for coming along with me tonight. Everyone have a great week. I can't wait to talk with you again next Monday. Have a great night.